Hey guys, I am super excited for today's video. So we're doing a full face of makeup, but it's all products that you guys consider oldies, but a goodie. So I actually took to Instagram and I did a little poll and I asked everyone to respond to that poll with products they considered to be oldies, but a goodie. And I went through and things that I had in my collection that you guys suggested, I picked out and we're going to do a full face tutorial using them. And some of them are like just incredibly iconic makeup products that we all love and we all know so well. A lot of you guys all had like very similar responses. Like there was only like three foundations, three bronzers, three concealers, three eyeshadow palettes, like pretty much three for everything. And there was so many people who got back to that. So that was, that was really great. So I'm really excited. I love when you guys have like input like that on videos. It makes it so exciting. I think so to prime, I'm going to use a Too Faced Hangover Primer, which is nothing new to my channel because this is actually my favorite primer this is definitely an oldie but a goodie it's been around for so many years now and it's one of the best primers I've personally ever used I love it so I'm just going to slap them on my face as I usually would because it's the best of the best and it's my actual favorite so when it comes to foundations there were two that were incredibly close and they are both quite different foundations so you have the Estee Lauder double wear which I'm actually yet to try I have it but I haven't even tried it yet I think I want to do an actual foundation review and wear test on it so that brings me to the most requested one, which I was very happy about because it's NARS Sheer Glow, which I have recently rediscovered and just cannot get enough of. This is without a doubt so many people's holy grail foundation. It is such an, an incredible foundation. It works with so many skin types. If you guys are looking for something that can be worn a little bit more natural, but also built up, that has really nice coverage, really evens out your complexion, but has very much like a natural finish. So it's not too matte. It's not too dewy. It's just kind of like right in between. Then I would recommend checking this one out. So I'm using the shade Fiji in this foundation as well. You can apply it with your fingers and it actually applies really nicely with your fingers or I just literally like tip it on my face. So when it came to concealers, there were two absolute standouts. The first being the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which I totally agree with. This is one of my absolute favorite concealers. It is a very like natural finish concealer that still has really great coverage. It's very forgiving on fine lines and it's great if you have dry under eyes as well. It's not going to go crusty or anything like that. The number one, like this is what most people commented is the Instant Age Rewind Erase Dark Circles Treatment Concealer by Maybelline. So I have actually never tried this. I I got sent these a little while ago because I think they extended their shade range. So I thought today for fun, we might as well try the new concealer since I've never given it a go. I've just got to get all the plastic off it. And I also don't know where I put my tweezers before. Where did you go? My tweezers. Da, 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 da. So it's like a twisty top and I'm using shade light pale to start with. I don't know if this is going to be too dark. The little fuzzy applicator, kind of scary. What the heck? Okay, color looks good. This applicator's weird. Definitely just a traditional doe foot applicator type of girl. It's making like squishy noises. So I'm just gonna take my Sigma 3D HD blender and blend it out. So yeah, it's not like the most fullest coverage on my under eyes, but I like how it looks based off first impressions. Like, I just like this applicator is just a little bit hard to get up in like the darkest parts of my inner corner. So I get really dark in around my tear duct. So I usually like to get doe foot applicators and apply it directly in there as well and blend it out with my 3D blender. I can't get in that precisely with this type of applicator. Um... It just sort of goes all over my eye, which I wouldn't put that much concealer like on the start of my eyelid, usually. Um, so yeah, we'll just, I guess, see how this goes. For bronzer, there was a few different bronzer recommendations. There was the Hula Original Bronzer by Benefit, which is like a really nice bronzer. I used to use this all the time. I do prefer Hula Light these days though. The undertone is just so much better for my complexion. Like even when I have a fake tan, it's just a better undertone period. Then we have NARS Laguna, which I used to use this religiously. Like this was my number one, my OG bronzer before I discovered um, Too Faced Chocolate Soleil and then I discovered Hula Light. So, but this is like literally, this is like 
the first bronzer I ever like really freaking loved. It's a beautiful undertone. It's a little bit different to Hula Light, but not quite as dark as the original um, Hula. And um, it's just a really nice bronzer. This is so manky. Ow, why does it my elbow? I don't know why I even still have this compact. Like this just needs to go in the bin. But And then lastly, the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel, which is a cream bronzer product. It has the most beautiful, luxurious packaging. Like, oh my gosh. This is one of the best bronzers in my entire collection as well. It is a cream bronzer. I've had this for over three years now and it looks like it's barely been touched, but the color of this is just absolute perfection. And I thought today I might dip into this one since I haven't used it in so long. And it's definitely, it's one of the best bronzing products on the market and it's been out for a very long time. So I thought how appropriate, like oldie but a goodie, this is definitely that. So I'm going to take my Extreme Structure Contour F04 brush from Sigma and I'm going to simply like pat straight into this and pick up some of the product. And um, it just applies so nicely with this brush. And I just pat it on my face like so. It has just such a beautiful like sun-kissed natural bronze color and it blends so easily. It is without a doubt the best cream bronzing product I have ever touched in my entire life. And it is just like a beautiful color and you really don't need much product. That's why this tub lasts you for so long because it's actually huge. Also, I just have to say Sigma brushes are also an oldie but a goodie. Um, they've been around... They've been around for over 10 years and they are actually the first like real makeup brushes I ever purchased myself and I've used them ever since. So Sigma's brushes definitely get a shout out in the oldie but a goodie category because they are like, they've just gotten better and better with time and they're already so good. Like when they first came out, came out of the door, they were already amazing and they're even better now. Okay, so for my under eyes, I'm just going to take some mineralized skin finish in light, which for me, this is an oldie but a goodie. You guys didn't vote this one, but this is just my favorite under eye setting powder and it has been for so many years. I'm just going to use that to set my under eyes. I get it in the shade light because this just really helps brighten under my eyes. I'm just going to use my NARS Laguna bronzer. I've got NARS Laguna in this face palette, which was a limited edition face palette from NARS. So I'm just going to take it out of this one because it's not crusty. <laughs> and I don't want to use that crusty bronzer on my face, which therefore means I should just throw it out. I don't know why I haven't. I feel like NARS Laguna is just very slightly more cool toned than um, the Chanel cream bronzer. So it just kind of balances it out. Okay, so for the rest of my face for setting powder, I'm going to use a good old Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. A lot of people were saying the Coty Air Spun Powder, but I've never owned that and I don't have it. But I do have Laura Mercier translucent powder, so I'm going to use this to set the rest of my face. And I'm just going to take my large F30 powder brush and just dip it straight in and set anywhere that I didn't put that other powder. Just a light dusting with it. You can bake with it. Um, I find Laura Mercier translucent powder is a little bit drying on my skin, but it's really good like when you're right in the middle of summer because it just soaks up like all the oil on your face. So it's something I typically would only usually use when it's really hot. Um, but if you're a really oily skin type, then you might just love it all year round. So then next up for blush, lots of people said NARS Orgasm, which I actually still use all the time. It's one of my favorite blushes. This is one of the limited edition packagings of it. It's actually changed color over time though. I have a really old one. Actually, I've had like three of these, but this is a really old NARS Orgasm and it's kind of like a little bit deeper in color. The new one's definitely more pink and it has gold fleckles in it. So we've got the new one on top and um, the old one on the bottom. See how they're very slightly different colors. This one looks a lot more peachy and this one looks a lot more pink. Um, but I do love this blush. It's a holy grail of mine. Um, other people also said MAC blushes, which you guys know, I literally use a MAC blush every day. I use New Romance. It's my favorite, oh, my favorite blush. So today I thought I'd use Orgasm though, just to switch it up a little bit because I always use MAC. And I'm going to use my old one. I haven't even touched a new one yet because um, it's brand new and I've still got this one that literally has, looks like it's got not even a single dent in it. Such a beautiful blush though. It has like really nice gold particles in it. 
So I'm just going to quickly jump off camera and fill in my brows with a brow pencil and then I'll come back and yeah, we'll carry on from there. Okay, so a brow product that is an oldie but a goodie that I've had forever and use forever is the Benefit Give Me Brow. I use shade three and no matter what brow products I'm using, I use this to set my brows. And when I'm not wearing much makeup, like if I'm doing like an everyday super minimal makeup look, then I will actually just use this all by itself in my brows. I won't use any pencil. I've obviously, I've obviously gone in with a brow pencil already just to really like make my brows nice and bold. I like my brows dark. So even though I've got blonde hair, I like them to be like more of a darker brown shade that's just the look I personally go for but this is really great for setting your brows and it just kind of makes them look a little bit more I don't know real and less filled in because it's got the fibers in it as well and it just sets it down in place so you're not going to like brush off half your eyebrows if you accidentally hit them or something like that when you have this in them and if you have any crazy brow hairs it'll just help lay them down I actually really need to get my brows done so there were only two highlights that people suggested and they were the exact two that I thought of as well. And the first is Jaclyn Hill's Iconic Champagne Pop. Um, I have her face palette here and I believe this one's Champagne Pop. This color right here, I've actually never used this face palette, but that's Champagne Pop. I had the full size of Champagne Pop as well, but I gave that to my mum because I had this so and I wasn't really using it. So yeah, but Champagne Pop. Iconic. Um, I think a lot of people really love it. I love this face palette. I think it's beautiful even though I've never actually used it. It's because I went through a phase of collecting makeup but not using it. Literally now I'm just like what the fuck. Like you can collect makeup products and still use them. Like I don't do that anymore. I don't buy anything just to keep for display purposes. I now actually use everything I buy. But this I bought never to use. Like I had no intention of ever using it. I probably will now though. Now that I remember I have it. I might actually take it out and start using some of the highlights and blushes. But next up, which is the one I'm going to use today, which for a long time was my only highlight. Like I didn't own any other highlights. This was the only one in my collection and it is the Iconic MAC Soft and Gentle. This is actually my second or third Soft and Gentle. I've gone through many of these in my time and um, it's just like a really beautiful like champagne-y highlight, I guess. Um, I'm just going to take my High Cheekbone Highlighter F03 brush from Sigma and apply it to the tops of my cheeks. Um, it's beautiful. I remember the first time I used it, I didn't get much color payoff, but with these, you kind of have to scratch the surface away to be able to get like Ooh. the pigmentation for the highlight um, to actually show up on your face. I guess it's like a baked formula. I think it's baked or it's like heavily pressed. See, that's so nice. Like I forgot how pretty that was. It's like wet looking. Oh my gosh, we're on to eye makeup. Ah, I'm so excited. So there were two palettes that um, really stood out in people's suggestions and that was the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette and also the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. Renaissance? Renaissance. How do you guys say it? Renaissance? Renaissance. The Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette, it's a great basics palette. I actually um, didn't use much of it like in the past you guys will see it looks like a nearly brand new palette I only used it very sparingly but when I did use it I did enjoy it um, I'm not going to use it today just because I've done so many like brown eyeshadow looks recently and um, I think we're all getting over it it's so funny people like okay so I went through a phase where I was doing heaps of colorful makeup and all people kept saying to me is like oh it'd be nice if you could do like some more natural eyeshadow or some more browns and not so many colors because like colors aren't very wearable so I was like okay like I totally understand that I'll do some more brown looks and now I think I've done so many brown eyeshadow looks that people are like can you use some color again and it's just so funny because like when people were initially requesting natural looks I was kind of like oh I don't want to do natural makeup I don't want to do browns I want to use color and and then people are like, oh, can you do something colorful when I'm like feeling browns? It's so funny. Anyway, it's okay. It's okay. There's plenty of days in the year to do eyeshadow of all different colors. But today I thought I would do um, a look using the Modern, Rena 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 Modern Renaissance palette. And I think I'm going to use like the maroony shade. So I think I want to use like Love Letter, um, Venetian Red. And I don't know whether I'll use Vermeer or whether I'll use Premier... Primavera? Primavera on my lid, but something like that. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll just get stuck into getting it on my face. I can't talk. <laughs> Guys, 
I stumble over my words so much and it's because my brain goes so fast and so does my mouth and they sort of compete with each other. So it's like it doesn't always come out and um, I try not to edit that stuff out because if you spoke to me in real life, that's exactly how I speak in real life too. Don't have to be a douche and correct me. I know people love to do that on the internet. Um, it's just that I don't believe in doing 50,000 cuts of trying to say one sentence just because I stumble over one word. Because you guys get what I'm saying and only nitpickers pick. You know what I mean? So let's get into the eyeshadow. Um, I think I'll just quickly prime my eyelids. I'm just going to use the Urban Decay Eye Primer Potion, which one person did suggest in the poll. Um, this is definitely an oldie but a goodie. I have used this for years. Years and years and years. And um, I think I've had it like three times. So it's a great eyeshadow primer. It just, if you get oily eyelids, it'll just help keep your eyeshadow intact throughout the day. That's pretty much all it does. And it gives a good base to put most shadows down on. So that's why I personally use it. I don't use too much because otherwise it can get a little bit like crusty on your lid. I just use a little bit through the crease just so if my eyelids get oily, they don't like settle into the crease. If I don't use it, they will settle. I might try and do a halo, just because I never do halo eye looks. My battery died, just had to change it. Um, but what I was saying is, I barely touched most of these shadows, and it's the same situation with majority of my eyeshadow palettes, because I have so many. And I pretty much only wear eyeshadow one day a week, which is Saturdays. It's literally the only day I wear makeup now. I don't even wear makeup during the week anymore. So that's why all my eyeshadow palettes are like virtually untouched, because I just don't actually do my makeup that often. Um, makeup for me is not something that's a necessity. It is something that's for fun. So I just do it in my free time for fun. I literally like, I'm that I don't give a fuck. Literally. The older I get, the less fucks I give and the more it becomes just for fun than it comes becomes for necessity. So anyway, I'm going to start off with Love Letter on an E25 blending brush as per usual. It's literally my favorite blending brush. I'm just trying to get this in here so you guys can see. So I'm going to use that. Actually, I might even just hold it up like this. Then I can insert some clips with some little um, X's or whatever on it to show you what shade I'm going to use. So I'm going to start off with that and just try and like pack it all around my eye in like a halo shape. So on the inner corner and all the way around and we'll just go from there. Oh, this palette's so dirty. Oh, it picks up a lot of eyeshadow when you tap into it. Now I feel like I talk about this in nearly every single video, but the method I've adopted these days with eyeshadow when I'm doing something that's like a really pigmented eyeshadow that if it falls out on your face is going to cause havoc, um, I actually tap into the pan, I pick up a considerable amount of shadow and pigment, and I actually press it onto the eye. So I press it on and then I blend and it saves having all that fallout all over your face. It's honestly like such a lifesaver and it also means you can build up really intense colors with shadows too. So if you're wanting to like build up pigmentation, it's a great way to do that as well. You just simply pick up the pigment, pat it onto the lid, blend, pick up pigment, pat, blend, and you just go back and forth until it's like the depth of color you want on your eyeballs. Damn, that's a nice color. Damn. <laughs> I'm just trying to decide what color I should use as like the transition shade between the darkest and my brow 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 blown brow blown brow blown brow blown brow blown <laughs> brow bone gosh I'm hyper when I can't talk I think I'm my I don't know if I should use burnt orange or I might use burnt orange yeah look I'll start off with burnt orange because if I don't like it I can always add this one, which I can't pronounce, um, over the top. So I'm just going to take a, an Exact Blend E32 brush and just like pop the color all along the transition line. I just don't know if I should just literally do matte all over my lid, then put the shimmer on top, or if I should cut the crease. Okay, look, I'll do a cut crease. <laughs> oh, it's so tricky sometimes figuring it out. Just doing it just in like the center of my eyes. I'm just going to try and do like a halo effect. And then I'll put like a shimmer um, on the center of my lid. So that's like a spotlight. 
So I'm just going to take an E21 smudge brush, which is like a really little defined brush, and I'm going to pick up more of Love Letter and just sort of like build up around where I have the concealer and try and get like, I don't know, the shape to look semi-symmetrical. I think this is the reason why I don't really like halo eyes on myself. I think it makes like the fact that my eyes are very different shapes stand out heaps. Like, I don't know, like every eye look is just not always the most flattering on some people. And I just don't think this is the most flattering on me, but we're going to persevere and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and pop the mirror on my inner corner and also all over my lid. And I'm going to use an E57 firm shader and also my E46 inner corner highlight brush to do so. Oh guys, I'm really happy with how it's looking. So I'm just going to take Burnt Orange and Love Letter, which are the two shades that I've used all over the lid, this one and this one, and I'm just going to run that under my lash line and really smoke it out as well. I'm just trying to think what color I should do for the brow bone highlight, because obviously my highlight on my cheek is like a warm tone highlight, but the color on my lid is a cool tone. And I'm like, I've got the warm tone transition shade. What do I do? might just like color block it and just use the same shade as what's on the lid. Hopefully it doesn't look crazy. I don't usually use colors like this on my brow bone. So I'm just going to pop on some wing liner and I'm just using my quick flick in the modest size in intense black. So for lashes, these aren't an oldie. They're a newbie and they look really beautiful. They are the Nakia Joy Cosmetics lashes and these are in the style Ava and they just look so pretty. Like look at the packaging that Nakia's lashes come in. <gasps> like what? What? Are you joking? So this little acrylic container you can obviously keep to put all your lashes in and this set of lashes just looks so pretty. So I'm going to use them. I feel like an iconic oldie but a goodie is definitely the Ardell Demi Wispies but they're actually quite a natural lash in comparison to what I usually wear with bold makeup. So I'm not going to wear them today but I do actually love that style of lash for more natural makeup or when I'm just wearing just wing liner and no shadow. Alright, so I'm just going to pop some mascara on. I don't have an oldie but a goodie for this one, so I'm just going to use my NARS one. Just coating my natural lashes so they blend in with the falsies. I just poked myself in the eye. Oh my god, I'm going to have an instantly red eye now. Like even redder than what they were before. Oh god, damn. No! So now when it came to lipstick, there was literally only one. Everyone said MAC lipsticks. And I agree, they are a gold, an oldie but a goodie. I keep going to say golden oldie. Oldie but a goodie. And lots of people are saying Velvet Teddy. I'm not sure if Velvet Teddy will be the perfect shade for this eye look. But I feel like Myth by MAC is also another iconic lipstick shade. So Velvet Teddy is like a much darker nude. Yeah. You know, I've actually never worn Velvet Teddy. I wear Blankety and Honey Love, which are very similar. But Myth is like a really nice light nude. As you guys can see, it's like a creamy nude. I honestly really like this paired with like just a slightly darker lip liner. And I guess somewhat of a oldie but a goodie lip liner is the ColourPop lip liners. They are my favorite lip liners. Um, I really love the shade Skimpy. It's like the most perfect nude and it's literally what I use to line my lips 99% of the time. So I'm going to line my lips and pop Myth on by MAC and then we're nearly done. I've just got to fix my hair then. Oh, so excited. <laughs> Now I do personally like this lip color topped with a gloss because it's just, it's so nearly skin tone that I think like having a sheen to it rather than being matte is a little bit more flattering. And the oldest lip glosses I have in my collection are actually from ColourPop and the shade Fairy Floss. I forgot how much I liked this color. It's just like a straight up nude gloss. It's nearly clear. It's actually that nude. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of this on. Hope it doesn't burn my lips because it's probably like really out of date. It smells expired, but we'll just see how this goes. Yeah, look, it feels expired. The gloss, but it's a nice color. Hopefully, um, it doesn't burn my lips. So I'm just going to quickly go zhuzh my hair and come back and give you my final verdict on if I still love these products or not. <laughs> okay, guys, so there you have it. I've got my makeup all done. My hair's all sleek and shiny now. So final verdict, 
All these products are amazing. Um, the only product I'm a little unsure about is the Age Rewind Concealer from Maybelline, just because it was my first time using it today, but I'm definitely gonna keep using it. And I feel like for a daytime concealer or for like an everyday work makeup, you know, slap it on, just get a little bit of coverage on your face concealer. I think the formula of this is nice. So I'll definitely keep using it and keep you guys posted. But in regards to all the old favorites, they are still favorites. They are all such awesome products. Like I feel like it doesn't matter that they've been out for a long time. If you guys are looking for new products and you like the look of anything you've seen in today's video, I would highly recommend if you haven't already tried them out, but I'm guessing majority of you have because you guys voted on this. You guys told me what your goldie, oldie, but I, I just can't get that saying like right in my head. My brain just wants to say it the wrong way around, even though I know that's not the right way. <laughs> oldie but a goodie. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful. If there's any other products you'd like to see in a similar style video, then make sure you comment them below and I can definitely do that for you. Um, I feel like I need to rip out the modern rena renaissance, renaissance palette a little bit more often because this baby, she's pigmented and she's pretty in that color on my lid. I'm obsessed. So very happy to have sat down and rediscovered some old favorites. It was a lot of fun. And um, I think I'm going to shop my stash a little bit more often because I have a lot of makeup and often with this, like so many new releases and I'm lucky enough to receive a lot of them. As soon as a new product comes in, it's kind of like the old favorites sort of sit in the drawer for a while until they're rediscovered. So I'm glad I rediscovered them today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments and of course subscribe if you haven't already and I'll be talking to you really soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. With my lipstick on the tooth.